Hey y'all, welcome back. We better uh, shoot an April video while it's still April here, huh? It's the 28th. We just got back from camping. I've had a shower, but I'm still smelling a little smoky. But I want to give you all a quick tour. It's a kind of a stormy, windy day right now. Uh, got a little traffic, got some birds. But we've got a food forest that I love being in more than most other parks and nature because it's just so beautiful. So let me show it to you. Let's start at this back layer here. The first thing I planted, which was this garden bed here with a bunch of ornamentals, lots of iris, daylilies, um, Asiatic lilies. So <clears throat> we've got all of those blooming. We've got artichokes through here. Amaryllis, different daylilies developed by different people. This is an abelia. And then on this side, my gladiolus are starting to bloom a little bit. And the maple's looking great. The iris are done, but we have lots of different daylilies starting up. So let's continue on this. I did extend this bed out a lot from where I initially had it when we moved here. Oh look, there's a little daylily down there. Got one there. These puffballs aren't dandelions. This is the Carolina desert chicory. The native that showed up here. This American beauty berry is starting to make little flowers. I took about 30 flowers off this persimmon. I want it to grow this year. This one I took about, I don't know, 40 or so, maybe 50, and there's about 20, 25 left. I took two-thirds of them because there were about three on each branch, and now there's one. This curly dock's gone to seed, so this could be used to make a grain now. I've never tried it myself. I've heard it's not the best, but you know, it's a good survival food, a native that grows here really well. Um, this persimmon, I'm gonna let it get tall, I've decided. It's not fruiting or flowering, it needs more sun. I did use my weed eater the other day to chop down these asters and goldenrod because they were getting a little tall. This year I'm gonna try to keep them at about this height so they can get um, some nice blooms in and just be lower to the ground so I don't have them everywhere. You can see my elder that I planted starting to flower. Let's get over there and check those out because they're really cool. And then I'll talk to y'all just for a minute about termites. I wish my muscadines were flowering this year, but wait, what? Little baby grapes. My wife's gonna be like ecstatic about this. This is covered in little bitty baby grapes. I hope that's coming through on the video. Okay, third year, I grew those from seed. Um, now let's talk about termites. So I had an old birdhouse right here against our house, a wooden one, and it was rotten, and I had what I thought was an abandoned anthill underneath it, but it was a termite, subterranean termite mound, and behind it, they had a tube about the size of my fist that they had built up this spring going to our house here. Now, that crack in the foundation is not a worry to me. It's not, um, we've had it looked at, it's not a problem but the termites that were going into our house were a problem so we noticed this because on our drywall on the inside here we started to see some little pinpoints one day just out of nowhere they appeared there were like 20 of them and so i came out here found this tube destroyed it we had organic matter up to below that white line there and um it wasn't wood chips they don't really care for that it was sticks 
and cuttings and other just debris that I had laid along here and I shouldn't have. Um, without that birdhouse blocking it, I would have seen the tube and I'm ashamed of myself for doing that. But the good news is I destroyed the tube. They didn't try to rebuild from the bottom. I, I excavated some of the material away from the foundation. And for about a week, we had termites trying to build a tube from in the house to down here. Now, the natives cannot make, the native um, subterraneans can't make an aerial nest in your house. So they can't install a queen in there. And they also need wet wood to live, same as Formosans. So there's not wet wood in there. They were just getting cellulose from the drywall. Now, after about a week of, I'd say about two termites a day were building. First, first day they built one down to like here and it was skinny, but um, it had about three termites in it. The second day they went down to here and then to here and then to here. And then they ran out of termites that were left in my house. And now the problem solved. We could have paid $1,200, sprayed Fipronil, or not sprayed, but put Fipronil baits all over our property. And we also had, because I had it built up over here, we had a little um, tube going up here, and I had a little hole. So that's the other thing. Mechanically sealing holes and entrances into your house is a way better solution than chemicals that they have to keep coming back every year. Now, this caulk won't, they can eat through caulk, but they're not going to be interested in going in there if they don't have a bunch of material sheltering them to the top. So they've since disappeared. I'm not worried about them coming back. They're still in my yard. We have a oak tree we cut down seven years ago right here. And it was too close to the house. And so we took it down and they're in the roots they've got to be living down there that's fine they're natives they're everywhere in louisiana so i'd be a fool to think i wouldn't have them but i won't have a problem with them in my house now also this time of year formosan termites that are not native are swarming so if you keep your porch light on or your kitchen light they might come in through your vents and end up on your stove that's pretty common um, they just swarm for about a month but as long as you don't have wet wood in your house, they're not going to set up shop and do damage. If you do have a leak in your house, you need to seriously get that fixed because otherwise um, they'll destroy your house very quickly. Um, so turn your lights off, turn your porch light off, your kitchen light, your bathroom lights, anywhere you have vents, openings in your house, um, and that'll keep them away from your house when they're flying at night or at dusk so anyway we've had some experience with termites lately and took care of it no problem very cheap no chemicals here so everything's doing great the bananas are coming back the fijoa the turks cap american persimmon I already showed y'all that row a little bit let's finish going this way got daylilies everywhere melons everywhere squash cantaloupe cucumber in the back um, lufa in the back all these nectarines look so good and they are like so close to being ready like some of them are starting to get a tiniest bit soft but you can see them all under here and I thinned I don't know about 40 or so off this is the again the third year for this tree just like the muscadines over there this little plums finally starting to take off I spread mustard seed from these all in here and all in the back I'm using that seed this plum this is the uh, Santa Rosa that one was blue damson this one's starting to really take off and you can see I've got a nice open center peaches made some flowers but none of them oh wait there's a little peach so we did get a little bit of fruit 
to hold. There's a couple more. We'll see. The pears flowered a lot. They held these three. They kind of look diseased to me. I don't really know. But um, may end up switching this variety. This is pineapple. My sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes are coming back here. There's tubers all up under here. So, and you can see the growth starting to come back. The willow chair I moved came back no problem. We've got blueberries all in here. But the willow chair, I need to get a board on this seat and flatten it out a little more with some weight for the kids. But they should be able to sit on this this year. Should be strong enough. So, oh yeah. And we have a pomegranate. Wonderful pomegranate. This is the only one I've seen. We just got back. So lots of things can happen in a couple days. We have um, a way wider pomegranate in the back, the angel red. So let's go check that out and finish up this tour for y'all. We're just going to do this one take. No regrets. I'm serious. This is my shot. I can't mess this one up. So, um, got some tomatoes. Started from seed. Got some tomato transplants beans, green beans, black-eyed peas, lizards, we grow everything here, squirrels, birds, skinks, you name it. Um, lots of mulberries because I hung up some DVDs in here and they're keeping the mockingbird away that was ignoring my net and mmm they're so sweet, y'all. This is Persian. And that one's half eaten, it looks like. Mmm. Very, very good. Some of them get decent size. I hope this is in focus. We'll find out. It's so bright out here I can't can't see that well. So here's the other Turk's cap. The red one, some rosemary, cilantro, um, ageratum. Blue mist flower. This shouldn't be blooming right now. It blooms in September, but we've had it confused the past couple years. So, can't say I'm super surprised to see this. Dill, pineapple sage, Pakistan mulberry. You can see it's already taller than me. If you watch my other videos, I protected it in the winter. I'm going to come get a couple more mulberries before we continue on. I better save some for Avi. She really loves them. Alright. We've had someone watching our chicken, so I'm not sure if we'll have many eggs. Nah, they've been... They came and let them out this morning and got them. But we appreciate their help, so... Happy to give them the eggs. Oh, look, that uh, marshmallow is coming back from seed. It looks like some little babies, but the main one over here died. Um, here's where those cucumbers are. They're going to climb up this. And on this side, oh, that's just random squash or pumpkins that came from seed. Got them in there, too. And then I've got some loofah here. And I planted some over here, but it didn't come up yet. Let's see. Uh, we got more mulberries here. I'm cutting them back. What's that? Oh. That's cool. Let's see if I can get that in focus at all. Cool little insect. Nope, can't get it in focus. Sorry. Here's the avocado, it's doing well. I trimmed back a bunch of mulberry stuff to give it some room to breathe. Um, my blackberries 
along this creek bed here are just loaded. Yes, we have blackberries. Very soon here, they're just everywhere. Um, the figs! Yeah, we have figs too. They're also everywhere. They're uh, twice my height now, almost, feels like. It, um, there's little figs all in here. Like, every one of these branches coming off of these two plants is covered in figs. We probably have 500 plus figs. Um, and then here's that pomegranate. I don't see any fruit forming completely yet, but with all these flowers, we're bound to get some fruit, right? Um, oh, maybe that's... Maybe that's a pomegranate starting right there. Let's go around the other side. Getting close to wrapping this up for y'all. Ooh, the marshmallow is blooming. That's really pretty. My little spot that I like to sit is right in here behind this marshmallow. This is my chill spot in my food forest. You can see I need to clear it out a lot now, but it's like a fig paradise in here. There's just figs every direction you look. And you can come set a chair in here in a couple months and just snack on figs to your heart's delight. But yeah, I need to do some pruning in the winter on these, these figs because they are um, taking over this path here. But yeah, gonna get lots of fruit. Let's get out of here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Sorry for spinning, y'all. I got a comment about spinning, and I always apologize when I do it. It's just, there's so much to see. The lettuce is going to seed. Um, the seed from the, what is it, arugula is starting to dry and get plump in some cases so I'm um, gonna have a ton of arugula seed here citrus has got some new growth I think this is a satsuma either that or I've been tending a root stock this is a sweet orange this is new don't know where that came from but it can decompose down there we have tons of asparagus seeds coming and then down here you can see the touch me not or mimosa is so fun to play with and we have some hindit here which is an edible medicinal some asters whatever's coming up there's tarragon that's a gumi oh it's making more flowers um, We've got narrow leaf goldenrod, we've got ironweed, we've got iris and asters, another goldenrod. All kinds of natives mixed in here. Over a hundred natives I've identified. Ooh, is that some assassin bugs on these asparagus? No, those are probably leaf footed bugs. Those stink. Yeah, they look a little wide. So um, I'm just going to shake them like that and it probably won't do anything. To harm their survival but it made me feel better look at the size of this purple carrot geez we need to get in here and harvest all these carrots because some of them are just getting massive like we've got purple we've got kyoto red we've got nantes what is this here's a that's an orange one or maybe a kyoto um tons of carrots left to harvest Tons of onions if we need them. The Swiss chard is still super healthy. These blueberries are everywhere. Not everywhere. I'd like them more places. And as y'all saw in the beginning, we've got little baby muscadines. So I hope y'all have a wonderful May. And this is your April video. If you're from the future, I hope we're doing okay. All right. Y'all have a good one.